Hi everyone, so this video is probably on one of the most important aspects, especially when you're starting out fish keeping. Um, and it's also good to always have, just in case an accident happens and you're trying to work out why, or stuff like that, if maybe not an accident is always the right word. So, um, this video is going to be on how to test your water filter. So, this is really an important thing, and I will go through e what each chemical does or what each test does to learn more about your water. I'll probably talk about TDS in another video and that will be more aimed at um, sort of as you go further, especially if you're looking into soft water fishes, it is really important. And it's just a meter, so it's quite easy to understand. So this water is not for drinking, this is for testing. Um, so I'll quickly show what test kit I'm using. So this is the JBL Pro Aqua Test Kit and this costs about £50 but it's known to be one of the best in the market. And I think for some water problems, especially the nitrogen ones, that is really important. Joan Rees Test Kits, I find especially the nitrogen testing um, test kits, that they do run out after a year so they go out of date. So it does need replacing so it can be a bit of something that does add up. And it does look more complicated than it is. And it's really not that bad. So it will come with test tubes, or not really, proper test tubes, and a load of chemicals, measuring things, lids, um, and all of that. So the first perimeter that is really important, so I'm going to go through the nitrogen ones first. And these ones that are ones that I think a lot of people when they're starting out don't realise they have to test. So the first one is ammonia. Ammonia is what is produced when the fish is producing waste. So this is the liquid waste, not the solid waste that the fish is producing. So this gives an idea of how well your filter is working. So if you have high ammonia, it could suggest that the filter is not working as efficiently and is not picking up the waste, or you are overfeeding, so the filter is producing too much waste for the filter. So this is a really good indicator. It is very toxic to fishes and is toxic to yourself in very high amounts, but in the aquarium it's not really going to produce that much. So you just add a few drops. It says here four drops, one. Oh, I'm just going to shake it, it's got air. Two, three, four. There's no harm in really adding more or less. I believe it's not like some experiments where you're doing proper science experiments, where it's like, you have to add those. I believe it's more like a test where it, but it's binding to particular chemicals. So these tech chemicals are toxic. <laughs> Try not to get them on your skin. So then this is the second bottle and this is four again from memory. One, two, three, four. Each test kit will have a different um, amount of drops and different colours that you'd have to match to it. So. If you're colour blind, it can be a bit more difficult, and it's worth bearing in mind that if you are, um, it might be ask, worth asking someone for help because there is no sort of alternative to reading off colours for um, these tests, for especially nitrogen ones. pH you can get a meter. Two, three, four, five. I'm just going to add another one. There's no harm in adding a bit more. So this is ammonia. And ammonia can take a little while to come out. And each test kit is different with the colours. So the next one is nitrites. Nitrites are what is converted when ammonia is converted, is oxidised, so an oxygen molecule is added to the ammonia. And this is what is produced when... Um, the fish produce waste, it converts from ammonia into nitrites. And the colour changes can take a while. Nitrates is very quick. So I usually don't do this first, I do this last. Um, but do it. you can already see this has changed colour to a yellow. Which, one, two, three. So this is only two bottles and they are sort of just a binding exercise, they're not anything too complex. One, two, three, four, five, 
So this would, if this is high, this indicates that the food, either you fed too much and there's been an ammonia peak that usually can happen within a few hours. You might not even see it, but it hints that you might have been overfeeding um, or the filter is not fully cycled, it's not working properly. So an uncycled aquarium, you can expect to either see this high and or this high. And I'll let those develop. So yeah. So this should take from memory about, it will say on here anyway, but usually about sort of 15 minutes. This is about sort of five minutes, the nitrites. And nitrates will usually take about 10-ish minutes. So nitrates is quite different in a way. So if I just get... So this requires 10 millimetres milliliters but this will depend on your test kit always follow the instructions and they are very simple there's no point saying that you don't understand or it's too complex for you these are not even gcse level science you could it's just following instructions so this one requires one bit of the powder so I just put that in so that goes in and with every one of the tests of this you have to mix the powder till it goes in the water and typically in science we kind of put a thumb on there but I'm going to be safe and a good example and use a lid instead because I should not be allowing chemicals onto my fingers so just going to mix that till it gets all sort of cloudy so you can mix it either way this is a proper way but you can just so yeah and some models of this test kit they ask for one um spoon of powder but they will all have this powder in some form it might be in the bottle already in a liquid that you have to then move to suspend um which is always worth shaking your bottle before you use it anyway but sometimes i'm a bit lazy one two Three, four, five. Might lose count quite a bit, so don't worry. <laughs> it's because the longer you leave the test get past its time that it recommends, the more likely it is to show a higher result than actually expected. So this is called a false, false positive, and it will look higher. So nitrates I have left in for a little bit, maybe longer. So we would usually measure in ppm, meaning parts per million. So per parts of a million water, you have one or so. Um, so this is a colour system. So this is for nitrates and uh, nitrites, and I'm sorry that it will be a bit discontinuous. But you can see which one it matches. It's good to do it against a sort of white background and good lighting. But you can see there's none measurable there and that is what you expect of a cycled aquarium so you expect to have none because it is still very toxic to fish nitrates which i'm still waiting they're going to be a while and ammonia i'll show anyway now but you can see even if you'd expect to wait about 15 minutes but so far it's showing none present it's really difficult on the lighting Nitrates, um, the natural if you want to test your water, you're going to have to wait. It's best to have a timer of some kind, and I set a time and then keep an eye as I add each of them. But nitrates are a sign of your water changing. So if you have nitrates, um, it might be present in your tap water, which is always worth testing for. Most tap water does have some traceable nitrates. But the best thing to remove nitrates is to water change your aquarium. So this is removing a volume of water from your aquarium. I recommend a minimum of 25%. Removing water from your aquarium does not remove um, bacteria. This is not suspended in the water column. It's stuck to hard surfaces. So you are not removing. You, might, you will be removing ammonia and nitrites though to some extent, which will reduce how much your bacteria can take up. But this... You can see it's clear and this means that there's a the aquarium has no measurable nitrates which means that enough water changes are but the main thing is to keep your nitrates below 20 ppm so some tap water will go up higher 
And that is when I'd recommend looking at alternatives, which I might talk about in another video, or if people want to ask about alternatives, I can reply in the comments. So then the next test that I'm going to do is probably your well, most well known, and I'm not really caring about how much I'm going to put in this, because pH is probably the easiest one you're going to do. And it's not really fuss, it's just a colour change that won't the intensity might slightly change depending on how much you put in there but we've all done pH tests in some form or manner so you will get different pH tests called uh, sort of a short narrow range ones which will be very sort of aimed at soft water area and then you get will get wide range so this from a pH of 3 to 10 so pH is a logarithmic scale which means that between each pH it's times by 10 this makes a bit of a difficult one to visualise, but it makes it sort of pH of 3 is 10 times stronger than the pH of 4 in acidity. If you, <laughs> But you can see coming out as the more drops the easier it is to see really. pH is a measure of um, H plus ions, which is hydrogen plus ions and OH ions which is oh, oh my god but you can see there it's just going to try and find the right one so this is coming out about so on the 3 to 10 scale It comes out about, I find this test kit a bit hard to see on pH, but you can't really see well at all. But to me, it looks about seven-ish. And they do have test kits that are more narrow, depending on what you're looking at. For some reason, I have got loads of liquid on that one, and I think it's from a test um, liquid. Um, and then finally the last one will be KH. So to measure KH, KH describes carbonate hardness. So it is kind of an affinity to the hardness scales, which is like GH general hardness. I don't have that in this test kit. Um, and also with P um, TDS. TDS is total dissolved solids and it contains sort of nitrates. Um, KH can influence it pH is kind of like a sign of it so if you get what I mean it's a bit more but they all kind of describe each other in different ways so KH is what we call a, a titration so a titration is a test where you're counting drops and sometimes you might have done it at school where you have those big towers and you drop it into there from there but this is just so we're wanting it to go from blue, let me grab it in here, KH. So KH you want to go from blue to orange, and you could get more different test kits, I'll look at different aspects of water and so you get a very clear picture of what your water actually contains. I think that's about four. Um, this is a harder water tank, sort of medium. But you can see you're counting drops, which I've forgotten to do. And you should shake after each one. There we go, and that's probably going to go orange. No, green. And then one more. There we go. You can see that's oh has turned orange from a blue colour. And KH is useful as is GH and it's all so quick edit. Um KH is a measure of how your carbonate hardness, as I've said. But the number of drops indicates how many um or how hard it is. So generally soft water will have about six drops and as it gets higher that will be getting harder water. Hard water tends to be about sort of 
nine-ish, ten-ish drops, and then it will kind of be about that. And it's always worth looking into it, and also researching different test kits. NT um, Labs is also popular in the UK, but JBL might be not be available in other countries as with NT Labs. So it's always worth researching. In the USA, you can use Seachem, and there is also um, uh, there's also API um, and Tetra has their own test kits, and there's varying quality uh, concerns about certain brands. I like the JBL ones; I find them a lot more like detailed. Um, but other people prefer other ones, and it does depend on your eyesight because some do have different color tests in them. Anyway, thank you. It's worth getting them, but these will give you an idea of your tap water. So these should not change normally within the aquarium. The nitrogen ones, so ammonia, nitrates and nitrites, they will change and they are worth keeping on. Especially if a fish dies, always check those first. Always check nitrites, because that will give me an indication if it's overfeeding or something wrong with the filter. Because water changes I do not expect to be that the issue, but it's always worth checking each of them. So afterwards you want to wash these out under running tap because these chemicals are kind of toxic. I would recommend actually keeping a um, sort of an Excel document just to record it, especially when you're first starting out, just so you have an idea of water perimeters. When you're starting out, it can be a little bit difficult. But testing your water isn't, and it's worth doing it. It will save you money and a lot of stress. You don't want, like, Preventing fish if there are deaths, preventing any issues, being able to solve them quickly without having to run to the shop, they might be closed at a time, and stuff like that. If you have high nitrates, water change. If you have high nitrites, I would, if there's fish in there, I would recommend water changing. But the, if you want help, I can always answer if you have results that are a bit strange. There are other test kits, you could test silicates, magnesium. Um, CO2, O2, O2 being oxygen, and all sorts of things like that. So it's really up to you what you, how deep you want to go into. When you have plants, you might be looking to phosphates more and other things like that. Algaes can be influenced by perimeters. Are not they're not in your normal test kit, but if you look around, there will be test kits for different things. Um, and TDS I do recommend if you want to go a bit more further in the hobby but I've put my TDS meter down somewhere and I have no idea where I put it. So I'll have to find it anyway. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for watching.